Check out this poster. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? You'd be better off staring at this poster for an hour and a half instead of watching this movie. But you would be missing out on one great scene. So let me just go ahead and show it to you. You're welcome. If you have a knife, you can join me. Oh, no thanks. I'm uh, not hungry. If you don't have a knife, you can use mine. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. The Forced is directed by Don Jones. It is a supernatural, cannibal, in the woods slasher film. Say that three times fast. It's uh, quite original in its concept. There's a lot of genres being represented, but uh, none of them are being represented very well. Let's see what uh, Amazon has to say about this uh, movie. Armed with that knowledge, let's proceed. The movie starts off with a prologue. That's only function is to add about 10 minutes to the length of the film to get the desired one hour and 20 minutes of a typical feature film. And it also sets the tone for what the rest of the movie will not be like. When the movie starts off, we're introduced to two couples, Steve and Sharon and Charlie and Teddy. Sharon and Teddy, the wives, decide they want to go on a camping trip by themselves. Well, as a matter of fact, we were thinking of going camping ourselves. Yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> you mean alone? <laughs> the husbands aren't invited because the wives want to prove their independence. Now, why don't you wait a few days for us? I can't. Why not? I guess I have something to prove. Well, they actually want the husbands to meet up with them uh, later at the uh, campsite. We'll be up tonight. You can bet on that. So they really just want to drive to the campground by themselves. It would seem the wives have a misplaced sense of what independence really is. So the wives pack up, head out, and the husbands rush to follow behind them. The husbands run into some car trouble early on and fall far behind the wives. The wives arrive at the park and realize they are the only ones there. Looking for somebody? Only Steve. Maybe they decided not to come up until tomorrow. Don't say that. Why does she look for Steve? How could he possibly be there? They left way before them and I thought they wanted to go alone anyway. You know, and be independent. The wives now tired and exhausted make it to the campsite only to realize they are unprepared. Now scared and alone, they wish their husbands were there with them. Wish the men were here. Yeah. I hate to admit it, but me too. The husbands, now several hours behind them, arrive at the park. They start making their way through the woods as darkness and rain approaches. At the campsite, under the veil of darkness, things really pick up. And when I say pick up, I use that term very lightly. The wise begin to hear recordings of wild animals from the darkness. Meet some ghosts that make Casper look scary. And an out of shape cannibal begins to stalk them. So that's the setup to the forest. Does that sound like something you'd like to see? I can honestly say I've never seen another movie that follows the same premise. And there's probably a good reason for that. If you're sick of seeing modern remakes of old horror classics, rest assured, this movie will never get a remake. It will be left completely alone. Well, it's very doubtful it will get a remake anyway. As soon as I put the movie in, I was pretty sure I had found a winner. The title sequence started and I fell in love in about five minutes. I'm just a sucker for that bold yellow lettering over old grainy film stock. It reminds me of the 70s exploitation films of the past, like Grizzly. 
That's a movie I need to talk about. You need to hear the gospel of Grizzly. I know I'm not the only one that feels that way towards old exploitation films. There are a slick few directors now going back and emulating those old exploitation films, such as James Wan. There are several synth heavy scores that are truly amazing and really represent the time in which this movie was made. A staple of any self-respecting 80s film is a rocking synth track. I'm happy to report The Forest has several synth tracks. The smartest move on Don Jones was to film in Sequoia National Park. In doing so, God became the set designer, and God makes great sets. Needless to say, the locations were beautiful, but completely underutilized. While there were some nice shots here and there, every shot could have been cinema gold. I also understand that due to the location, I'm sure there were numerous challenges. Just for that alone, the film deserves a little respect. Not a whole lot, but it does deserve some respect. This is uh, considered a slasher film more than anything else. And what are slasher films known for? Well, they're known for over-the-top gore. Does this movie have any gore? It does, and it's quite laughable at best. Which you may think would be a bad thing, but you would be wrong. Dead wrong. See what I did there? There was one effect that oddly looked quite believable. That looks uh, pretty darn real, don't you think? Shocking, isn't it? Every character had a unique personality and a backstory to help make them a little more relatable, which was uh, quite unexpected but welcomed. The uh, protagonists were all quite likable and you really didn't want to see any harm come their way. You sort of, dare I say, care about them? I would contrast that to a, a typical Rob Zombie film. In his films, the protagonists are usually potty mouths, do drugs, and are what you would typically coin trailer trash. And I'm talking about the good guys here. These are the people you're supposed to like. So, when one of those type of characters die or get hurt, who cares? It's usually a relief to just get them off the screen so you don't have to endure them any longer. I would say all the actors were believable in their roles in this movie and pretty much on even ground in terms of acting ability. None of them were great. None of them were horrible. There was one that wasn't completely believable in his role, but we'll get to him a little bit later. Steve, played by Dean Russell, stood out the most to me. That could have been due to his glorious, well-maintained mustache. He did tend to overact a couple of times, and he was the most animated and enjoyable to watch. But again, it could have just been that glorious, well-maintained mustache. I don't know, but it probably was. If I could change one thing about this movie, it would be the cannibal. Who does he look like? Think about it. Let the force guide you. To me, he looks like a fell on hard times, George Lucas. I can't help but see George Lucas when I look at this guy. It may be unjustified, but I can't take a cannibal serious if they look like George Lucas. I'm gonna say something now I'm not proud to say. When I saw Teddy on screen for the first time, I was thinking, she's pretty cute, she's pretty cute. Deep in my mind, I knew I was watching a slasher. So I knew that eventually, she would get naked. I was pleased by that revelation. And you know what? It never happens. There's no boobies in this movie. None. This is a slasher with no nudity. And you know what? It didn't bother me. You know why? Because I'm sophisticated. But you know what? It's gonna bother a majority of the unsophisticated. To which I am not. Because I'm sophisticated. The keystone to any good story is conflict. 
conflict makes the world go round. And I feel like this movie made conflict by just making the characters grumpy. For example, when Steve and Charlie start hiking through the woods, they start arguing with each other for no reason, creating conflict. I know this was done to create tension and make the movie more interesting, but it just seemed really unnatural and out of place. Let's talk about some of the more technical aspects of the forest. This is the stuff I really like to zero in on. You can find some pretty tasty errors in uh, low budget horror movies. In the 70s to 80s, there must have been an out of focus monster that terrorized movie sets. The forest suffers from numerous scenes that are out of focus. I don't mean just a little bit. I mean full blown blur. I can only imagine it must be really difficult to pull focus in these cameras that they're using because this is just such a persistent problem across numerous movies like this. Something that's pretty common is to shoot footage during the day and alter the footage in such a way that it appears to be shot at night. This is done because it's much more difficult and expensive to film at night. Everyone does this and it's a very common practice and it's still done today. It's called shooting day for night. It can be pretty effective if it's done properly. But if it's obvious the footage was filmed during the day, then the effect is ruined. One way to give the effect away is to show the blue sky. The forest has several scenes that were supposed to be at night but were filmed during the day. And it's just painfully obvious that they were not filmed during the night. It's made even worse by mixing day for night footage with footage that was actually filmed at night. The overall effect is just disorienting and a confusing mess. There are several scenes that were lit horribly, like this one for example. This particular scene has a double whammy of being out of focus and lit pretty bad. I could give them a pass for this because I know they're filming out in the middle of nowhere, but I watched the commentary and they said they had a light on hand, but they were told that the scene looked good as it was, and it wasn't. That light you had laying around, that would have helped. The one thing I look for more than anything else is boom mic. To me, a boom mic that slips in frame, that's the holy grail of movie errors. If I can find a boom mic that slips through the mix, I know I found a real gem. Do you think I found some boom mic? Yeah, I found some boom mic. Check this out. In an attempt to create even more tension, the filmmakers tried to add the threat of a wild animal attack. How did they do this, you may ask? By having cuts to footage of wild animals? Or better yet, having trained animals on set interact with the actors? Oh no, not that way. That would have been too good. They played what sounds like a bobcat loop over and over as the camera pointed at the dark forest. I don't think it achieved its ultimate goal. Overall, the editing is pretty good, but that's not always the case. This is Camper A and Camper B going into the forest in the prologue. This is Steve and Charlie going into the forest. Notice any similarities at all? This is what we call recycled footage. It's not a good thing. Let's talk about the story. There's a lot of stuff going on here. We got Ghost, we got a recent cannibal convert, and we got the illusion of an imminent animal attack via audio recordings being played from the woods. Overall, there's just too much going on and it's a mess and makes no sense. Really, stuff just happens. There, there is no story. It's uh, pretty ambitious that they tried to mix all these elements into a cohesive story, but that just did not happen. And to make matters even worse, there really is no explanation as to why things are the way they are. Some things are explained, but there are just some huge gaping holes that are begging an explanation. 
I'm going to give you an example of three things that need to be answered. Why did George Lucas turn into a cannibal? Why a cannibal specifically? Why did he decide he had to live in a cave in the middle of the park? Why does the mom want to punish those kids so bad? Even better than that, why are there ghosts in this story at all? Movies don't have to explain every little thing, and it's usually better when movies don't explain every little thing. But, there's limits. There's limits. The forest is pushing those limits even harder than Hollywood when it says it wants to make yet another Halloween sequel. We can only hope that Buster Rhymes comes back to reprise his role. Wouldn't that be nice? That's sarcasm, by the way. I didn't like Buster Rhymes in Halloween. That's the worst idea possible. You know, I can tell that some real thought or a lot of drugs went into the creation of the story. The director wanted to do something that had never been done before, and he did it. But I'm not sure it's for the best. He sacrificed story for just being different. Along those lines of doing something different, Don Jones didn't initially follow the standard horror conventions of women in horror films um, by them being like, kind of like weak and helpless. He made the women somewhat strong-willed and independent, but he didn't fully commit to that idea throughout the whole film. That's uh, unfortunate because that would have made the movie stand out a whole lot more. He could have made something along the lines of your next or I spit on your grave. I'm making a second part to this video where I talk about inconsistencies, movie errors, and just things that don't make sense. Uh, I could do that here, but that would make the video so much longer. So I'm just going to break it up into two parts. And the second video is going to be like a uh, special features, if you will. So if I had to give the forest a grade, a zero out of five, I'm going to give forest two out of five. And I think that's a pretty good grade, two out of five.